the area of those cross sections, remember doing the cross sections by washers? If we can find that the area of those cross sections incorporating this y equals 3 halves, we should be able to do a very similar thing. But let, let's think about it. If I'm to revolve, so this is, f of x is basically your radius. If I'm going to revolve this thing around the 3 halves, can you tell me what the rate, it's going to be so hard for me to draw, I don't know if I can do it. Um, I'll try. There's so many. There's so many going on, but it almost looks like an eyeball, looks like an eyeball, but that's flat. This is flat at the end, and this is flat at the end, uh, and there's this little space that goes around. Do you see the space that goes around? That, oh, you know what? This would make it a little clearer. Um, this right here. There. We have that space that's going around that. What we want to figure out is... Like a sideways bowl. Kind of like that, yeah, very much, with the open bottom and open top. If this is y equals 3 halves, here was basically the idea for going around the axis. Look, find the radius, square it, times it by pi. Find the other radius, the inside radius, square it, times it by pi, and then subtract them. That's the surface area of the outside one, minus the surface area of the inside one, and then we integrate the surface area. That was the idea, did you get the idea? Well, now this is very similar. Let's just think what the outside one is or what the inside one is. When, when you go back to here, what function is this stemming from? Look at the function. X cubed. What function is this one stemming from? Okay. Would you agree that the outside function is X cubed? And the inside function is x. Yes. Let's find a radius that's based on 3 halves. How would I find out the distance? Oh, let's, let's, let's think for a second. At any random point x, okay? How would I find the distance between a constant line 3 halves? Let's say right here. 3 halves and this is what I'm looking for. How far is that? Say it again. It'd have to start with three halves, wouldn't it? Because three halves is a little bit higher. Have to start with the three halves, because that's here. Three halves, and then you said minus minus what? X, x cubed. Ah. Would you agree that at any point the height of this function is x cubed? Mm -hmm. Therefore, at any point, the distance between <coughs> here and here is three halves are constant minus x cubed. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly right. Can you do the same thing for a random point from here to here? How much is that? Three halves, that's where we start, that's our constant, minus x. That's the height of the function at x. So right here says, this whole thing from here to the x-axis is three halves. The thing from here to here is x. So if I take three halves minus x, I will find the radius. <coughs> now that's kind of hard for some people to grasp. Do you grasp it? How many people do feel okay with that? Now, is that for the entire thing? Like if you were to do above three? Halves? Radius is the radius, right? Yeah. So we use the, the fact that this is apart from the x-axis to figure out the radius. Whether or not this is above or below, that's the same distance. It's still 3 halves minus x. Did you get that? That's right. Are you sure? So radius is radius. It doesn't matter how you get it, that's the radius. Now, we're going to go ahead and fill this out, this out actually, using this idea. This was the radius, that's why I, had, I walked you through this. This was the radius, this is the radius, correct? 
So for us, when we have a y equals a constant line and we're going around that, that actual axis, it's going to augment this just a little bit. It says, well, really what we have is the y equals a constant minus the, in this case, it's the outside function, not the top function, the outside function. That's weird to think about. Outside function. Inside function. Outside, inside. Now, I don't know if they give you that form in the book or not. I don't think that they actually do. Uh, but they expect you to understand the idea that all you're doing is taking a sliver of it, a slice, a washer, finding out the radius, look at that, the radius here and the radius here, squaring them, times them by pi, and then subtracting them. You find the surface area of the outside circle minus the surface area of the inside circle. In this specific case, why does moving its point of revolution change the area of the, of the actual area? Wouldn't it, the area still be the same whether it's on the x-axis, it's just location no, space? No, think about how much further away you are. This is actually touching the x-axis, right? Okay. And you're just going right around it. This is sweeping out. Think about it. If you're this far away, you're this far away out here too. Right, but the inside part's not being swept out because the shape of the object hasn't changed. This whole thing's being swept out, though. So if I do this, oh, it and I go, space. I'm going to take this little pan right here, and I'm going to go like that. Um, How much space has it covered? I don't know, this much, whatever that is. Uh, 37 pi over 4. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> awesome if I could do that. <laughs> then how much is this? Okay. With the sound effect. <laughs> Does it sweep out more volume or not? Because it covers yeah. more space. Of course, it covers a lot more space. Okay. It'd be easy if we could if we had, could just do the same thing, but it's not the same thing. This goes all the way around something that's further away than the x-axis right now. Yes. For that formula is it f of x squared or c? Oh, you know what? Uh, I just forgot this. Oh, c doesn't No, 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 no. What did I do to you guys? Goodness me. No, I was right. I was right. But and C gets squared. Radius. Yeah. Okay. That was where I'm going to say. Radius squared and radius squared. I just had too many little brackets. Sorry, I got confused. <laughs> radius, uh, hopefully you understand the idea. I didn't just jack it up for you. Good catch, Scott. Radius squared and radius squared. You got it? This is the radius of the inside. This is the radius of the outside. You're squaring it. Subtracting them and times it by pi. That is the surface area of the cross section of the big one minus the little one. That's what we're talking about, and then we'll integrate that. Let's try to fill this thing out. Where do you start? Take your constant minus f. Where do you start? Integration. Where do you no? Where do you start? Integration. <coughs> sure. It's still zero, right? Still one. Zero to one. What do you have inside? Pi. Pi. Now. Inside the pi. You can put the pi on the outside, that's fine. It doesn't really matter. Inside, inside there, what's next? What's our c in this case? Yeah, so when you think about it, it's just 3 halves minus x cubed. Squared, sure. Squared, of course. But that's saying the outside function, that's the larger of the two radii, the outside function, Minus inside function, give me that. Mm -hmm. Keep going. Minus x. Yeah. Perfect. I would love it if you would understand where this is coming from. Do you understand where it's coming from? Radius of the outside, big one. Radius of the little one, no problem. This is the surface area after you've subtracted those two things. Can you do the integral? Sure, yeah, yeah sure we can. What's the first step in doing the integral? What would you do? Deal with our square roots first. 
that's our, what it is. Our, our nice code, excuse me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably square them. Keeping our signs correct is crucial for you. Also, I'd, I'd like to encourage you to combine, start combining like terms if you have them. I don't know if you're going to have them here or not. But if you do have them, my goodness, combine them. Uh, and with, before you start doing integral. Some of you guys are, are doing integral. If you're setting up a problem and you have like five terms, three of which can be combined, yet you're doing the integral of all five terms. Why? Why? I'm at it. Why? Why not combine your like terms before you do it? It saves you twice the work. It saves you so much work. Okay, I'm off my little soapbox now. Let's go ahead and figure out the rest of this. Uh, if I do this, this is 9 fourths minus... I said it was the top minus the bottom. Say what? Oh, right, never mind. You know what? It really is, but you can't see it here. It is the top minus the bottom. All right. But it's just a different axis. You just have to set it, you have to set it this way. Yeah. Kind of reverse thing. Outside, inside. Okay, uh, good question. 9 halves minus 3x cubed, I believe. Plus x to the 6. Very good. That's the first one. Hope I don't run out of room here. Next one gives you 9 fourths. Notice how it's still in parentheses. I'm not dealing with that yet. I'm not doing it in my head. I'm making sure I have the signs right. Even I do this. Take your time to do the signs right. Minus 3x. Plus x squared. And I need a dx. Don't forget about your dx. It says what you're integrating. Can't get double check on my work. Make sure that I've done that correctly. Yes, yes, yes. Can you see that far? 9 fourths minus 3x uh, cubed plus x to the 6. Then minus in parentheses 9 fourths minus 3x plus x squared. Yeah, you know what? We are going to do that. We're going to distribute negative. We're going to look to see if we can combine anything after that. We have 9 fourths. We have minus 3x cubed plus x to the 6th minus 9 fourths plus 3x minus x squared dx. I'm going to move over here. Do you have any questions on the picture that I drew firstly? Okay. Wow, okay, so pi, 0 to 1. Oh, that's nice. I like 0 to 1. Those are, those are real cool. What happens here? This is why you'd simplify before you do an integral. Because otherwise you'd integrate 9 fourths and you have 9 fourths x twice. And you're going to eventually get rid of those numbers anyway. Why not get rid of them now and, and don't waste time integrating? The other things you can't combine into that. I'm going to write in the appropriate order. I'll write x to the sixth. I see a minus 3x cubed. I see a minus x squared. And a, what was it, a plus 3x? Can you do the integral? Of course. Yeah, it's actually not bad, right? It's the setup that's hard. It's understanding that. 